I want to tell you about some things I want to share with you, some hidden manna, not even hidden, but just some manna that the Spirit has been giving me all week long. And yesterday, while I was walking on the beach with the dolphins playing and frolicking right next to me for a good portion of that walk, I was following them, actually. They were leading down the beach. I was following them. And I heard Spirit say to me, you know, if you listen to your life, your life will talk back to you. How many of y'all know that? If you listen to your life, your life will talk back to you. And then the question becomes, what is your life saying to you right now? And every morning when I'm walking, I see the same two or three guys standing on the side of the ocean on the shoreline, casting their fishing rods. And sometimes I'll just say random things to them. What kind of fish you catching today or anything biting, you know, just whatever. Some days I don't say anything because I'm so in my headspace. I don't even see what's in front of me. I'm just moving. And yesterday I asked one of the dudes, I said, what you got? What you get? He said, I got a striped bass. And I was like, yummy. And I said, you're going to eat it, right? And he said, I threw it right back in. And in my mind, I was like, well, what's the point of that? I ain't say that, of course, but that's what I was thinking. And then I got it. Like, he's not out there fishing for sustenance to feed himself or to feed his family. He's fishing for sport. And fishing for sport is called catch and release. We know this. We've heard this term before. Catch and release. So I'm walking and thinking about that. And then I thought about Jesus. And that took me to the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew 4, 19, which reads, and he referring to Jesus, and he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. We've all heard that before. So I was thinking about that. How to catch and when to release. How to catch and when to release. And many of us fish for men and women through our ministry. And mine, as you know, is a ministry of media. So I catch souls through the spiritual service I offer in the doing of my ministry. And I'm doing my ministry right now. And you catch souls the same way, brothers and sisters. And really, when I say doing your ministry, that just means living your authentic life, being yourself. You're going to catch souls. Now, the trickier part for me and perhaps for you is knowing when to release those souls. Because every soul that enters your life, every soul you have caught through your ministry, each of those souls has a shelf life in your life. Come on now. Each one of those souls you catch has a shelf life in your life. Now, many of us have heard this before. Say it with me, brothers and sisters. People come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. How many times have we heard that? How many times have we said that? People come into your life. For a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And it takes wisdom to discern when to release the soul you have caught in the doing of your ministry. Can you hear me? It takes wisdom to discern that. When to release the soul you have caught in the doing of your ministry. Catch and release. I'm thinking about all of that. Walking along the water's edge in the wee hours of the morning with the sand in my feet. And the ocean slapping up against my toes. That's what I'm thinking about. And all of that reflection and contemplation led me to a book that I've had on my shelf for probably 20 years plus. And it was written by a man named Don Miguel Ruiz. Many of you are familiar with that author and with the book that I'm referencing, which is called The Four Agreements, A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom. By Don Miguel Ruiz, R-U-I-Z. Now, he and his son have another book out called The Fifth Agreement, which I just got yesterday. And I haven't had a chance to read that yet. So we'll talk about that book on another day. So I'm walking and I'm listening to Spirit taking me all these places. The Spirit said to me, Robert, son, beloved, what agreements have you made with yourself? Mm. What agreements have I made with myself? And I would ask you, brothers and sisters, what agreements have you made with yourself? And I began to list those in my head. And we could talk about those perhaps on another day. The one thing after I list those agreements that the spirit took me back to on this walk 24 hours ago was the first agreement in Don Miguel Ruiz's book, which is this. Be impeccable with your word. Be impeccable with your word. Well, what does that mean? Be impeccable with your word. So I'm going to open this up just a little bit directly from the book. And perhaps at another time, we can go into greater detail. But just the little bit that I'm going to open up is going to open you up. I promise you. Chapter two, the first agreement, be impeccable 
with your word reads the first agreement is the most important one and also the most difficult one to honor settle into this with me brothers and sisters sit back and lean into this the first agreement is the most important one and also the most difficult one to honor it is so important that with just this first agreement, you will be able to transcend to the level of existence I call heaven on earth. The first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. It sounds very simple, but it is very, very powerful. The word is not just a sound or a written symbol. The word is a force. It is the power you have to express and communicate, to think and thereby to create the events in your life. You can speak what other animal on the planet can speak. The word is the most powerful tool you have as a human. It is the tool of magic. But like a sword with two edges, your word can create the most beautiful dream or your word can destroy everything around you. Do you hear this, brothers and sisters? Your word. One edge is the misuse of the word, which creates a living hell. The other edge is the impeccability of the word, which will only create beauty, love and heaven on earth. Depending upon how it is used, the word can set you free or it can enslave you even more than you know. All the magic you possess is based on your word. Your word is pure magic and misuse of your word is black magic. The word is so powerful that one word can change a life or destroy the lives of millions of people. Every human is a magician and we can either put a spell on someone with our word or we can release someone from a spell. We cast spells all the time with our opinions. Mm. Now digest this or spit it out. I'm digesting this right here. Page 31. Now let us see what the word impeccability means. Impeccability means without sin. Impeccable comes from the Latin peccatus, P-E-C-A-T-U-S, which means sin. The I-M in impeccable means without. So impeccable means without sin. Religions talk about sin and sinners, but let's understand what it really means to sin. A sin is anything that you do which goes against yourself. A sin is anything that you do which goes against yourself. Mm, I like it. Sin begins with rejection of yourself. Come on now. Being impeccable with your word is not using the word against yourself. Let's stop right there. Being impeccable with your word is not using the word against yourself, which as we just learned from this teaching is a sin. Using your words against yourself, brothers and sisters, is a sin. I like it. Let's dig up into that a little more at another time. One more thing. When I left Discovery Channel in 2005, and one of the reasons why I talk about or reference Discovery so much is because Discovery is the place that God chose for me to professionally go in a boy and come out a man professionally. So that's why I reference that so often. When I left Discovery in 2005, I began studying life coaching and I started seeing clients eventually. And it became very clear to me pretty early on in my practice that I was going to have to find a way to learn how to sit with people in their pain and in their brokenness and not let their pain and their brokenness get into me. Can I get a witness? I was going to have to figure out a way. This became very evident to me early on to learn how to sit with my clients and have them tell me book, chapter and verse because I'm questioning for that and pulling that out of them. Book, chapter and verse of their pain and their brokenness downloaded to me and not let that download create pain and brokenness in me. This was not an easy thing for me, brothers and sisters. I had to get that balance out pretty quickly in order to be sustainable. How do I help people without letting their pain and brokenness hurt me in the process? How do I do that? Because I have an agreement with myself and my agreement with myself is to heal from my own pain and brokenness. That's my agreement with myself to heal. I am a brother on a healing path. I am a servant on a healing path and I'm here to help. And while I'm helping, I have to protect myself against all the places where you are still hurting. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I have to protect myself from the places where you are still hurting. 
Because inevitably, brothers and sisters, where you hurt leaks and that leak ends up affecting other people around you. Think of it as a boat. You know how a boat creates a wake? And if you get too close to that wake, that wake can take you under, brothers and sisters. So you have to be aware and weary of the wake that other people are creating in their unhealed and painful and broken places. All of this is what my life is saying to me this week and what spirit was ministering to me, particularly yesterday. I don't walk down the beach for seven miles every day. But yesterday I did. And we all know we've talked about this many times. Seven is the number of spiritual perfection. So I chose seven to get this manna. And spirit met me in those footsteps. Remember that famous imagery called footsteps where Jesus is carrying the brother and the sister down, uh, down the beach. Spirit met me in those footsteps and taught me what I'm sharing with you right now. Don't look for love.